Hello, my name is Alex with Apex Tutorials, and today we're going to be taking a look at all the different Jira project types that you have once you are getting started with Jira. So at this point, if you haven't seen my previous video, we walked you through how to basically start an account and purchase Jira. Um, this video is the next video in this series, right, where we're going to be looking at the three different software development project types. And I'm going to be explaining to you what the three different project types are so that you can pick the best one for you and your team. If you haven't already, please make sure you're subscribed to my channel and hit that like button. This really, really helps me and the algorithm and helps me create a ton of videos all about Jira coming your way. And I look forward to helping you out in your Jira journey. So without any further ado, let's get started. And we're going to jump into talking about the Jira projects. All right, so here we are. If you remember from the last video, you, this is where you got. If you just went to start that Atlassian.com, you created your account, or you logged in if you already had an existing one, you purchased Jira, you skipped over a couple of those questions. If you haven't, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, go check out that last video. It's going to tell you everything you need to know to get up to this point. All right, now this video here is perfect whether you are following along the video series or if you just want to start a new Jira project, right? Let's just say that you already have an existing Jira and you kind of just want to, you want to start a new project because your team's been working, something's just not feeling right with Jira and you're just kind of curious about what these different type project types are. So let's talk about each one of these. We'll start with Kanban, then we'll go to Scrum and then we'll talk about bug tracking, right? So just to kind of give you an FYI, right? Um, I probably work with hundreds of, I've, yeah, I've, I've, I mean, it's been at least 100 teams, right, that I've worked with, and I've definitely created at least 200 Jira projects in my lifetime so far. I've been a Jira administrator for five years, so I've been making a lot of projects. I have probably 200 is even a low number, but anyways, um, out of all of those projects, I would say 95% of them, right, have been either a Kanban or a Scrum. Most users of Jira are sticking to one of these two types. Very, very rarely have I seen anybody do a bug tracking one? And very rarely have I seen, um, I don't have it in this option because I have the free right now for this demonstration, but in standard and premium, you get a couple more options of different Jira project types, but very rarely do I see other teams go that route. Now, the reason most teams stick to these two issue type or project types here, Kanban and Scrum, is because these are what's considered an agile project, okay? And most teams, they're using Jira because they're trying to be agile. Right. And so you're not going to go wrong. Right. It's going to be it's these are basically the two project types you get. Right. And so if you're an agile organization and you're in a software development team and even if you're not right, these are perfect. Um, a lot of companies today are trying to just adopt a, like a digital transformation. Right. They're trying to become more agile. They're trying to adopt these agile methodologies and using the Kanban or Scrum is going to be appropriate even if you don't have software development, right? So even if you're like an IT organization or you're like a finance organization, either one of these tools or methodologies here with the, with respect to the project type is going to be really, really helpful and, and really going to get you going in the right direction towards your Agile um, goals. So let's talk about Kanban first because this is probably... If I had to pick between the two and, and really the three, but if I had to pick between the two true agile uh, project types, Kanban is going to be probably the easier one. And Scrum is going to be for those that have a little bit more maturity, right? Those that are in their in their agile journey and they're a little bit more mature, they're more they know exactly what they're doing. Maybe they've gone through like an agile one on one training. Um, or, or maybe they're just more comfortable with Agile. So if, if that's you, right, if, if you know that you're going to be doing sprints and then you're going to be doing basically this, a Scrum methodology, I recommend you do Scrum. But if you just want to dip your toes into the Agile world, right, and you just want a Jira project to help you manage your Agile project, Kanban is going to be a great way, not the best way, right? I, still, I would still recommend you do Scrum or at least um, try Scrum out, but Kanban is a great alternative. So Let's take a look at Kanban. All right, so Kanban is the Japanese word for visual, right? And a Kanban board, I, I'm just gonna kind of highlight, I'm not gonna go over all these things in detail, right? But I just wanna really highlight and address why even select a Kanban, right? So what you're getting when you when you do select a, a Kanban is you're getting a, just a board, right? So you get a Kanban board 
um, with your states, right? And one of the benefits that you get here is what's called a work in progress or a limit to your work in progress, right? So if you've ever taken a, a, a Kanban course, right, or at least you know you're familiar with the Kanban methodologies, then you know that you're basically measuring your like you're visualizing your work as it's progressing through its life cycle, right, or, or through the workflow in Jira speak. And you don't want to overwhelm yourself or your team by working on 50 things at the same time because realistically, we, we can't work on that many things, right? So you want to be focused on like two, three, maybe five is pushing it per individual, right? And so you can actually set limits on your boards so that Jira gives you a visual alert when you've exceeded your limits, right? But the whole purpose of the Kanban is to take work, right? Take your backlog of all this work that you need to do, select a few of them, right? Some high priority items, put them into your project and then move them across a life cycle. We're gonna be exploring all that, but I just kind of wanted to address this here. Now, what you do get are these issue types, right? So one of the common questions is like, well, what varies between um, each of the styles, right? And so what you're getting here is you get an epic story, bug, task, subtask, again, very common in the agile world. These are basically the plain vanilla stuff. Now, what is what, what I want to do highlight, right? Let me see if I can zoom in here a little bit more, is your workflow, right? Ultimately, what differs between the three, the Kanban, the Scrum, and the Kanban, Kanban, Scrum, and Bug, are your issue types and your workflows, right? So you can modify all of these later if you want, and I'm going to be... I'm going to have a video on all of that as well, but just out of the box, just to get you started, this is what you're getting. So this is what the Kanban is. So let's go take a look at Scrum. So when I open up Scrum, you're going to see that this looks slightly different. And for some reason, mine's just not updating. So I'm assuming that that's maybe a free versus premium version, but the workflow should be different between your Scrum and your Kanban because Kanban usually has a selected for development aside from your backlog and then in, in Scrum you usually just have your backlog and then whatever other workflows you, or state statuses you want. But anyways, let's focus on what's different with the with the Scrum, right? So with Scrum again, this makes more sense if you're if you've already taken agile courses. If you haven't, uh, make sure you drop a comment. I want to know where you are in your agile journey. Um, where do you think your Agile maturity is? But if you're completely new to Agile and you're, none of this stuff is making sense to you, let me know. I want to know because I, I do consider myself a bit of an Agile coach, right? And I would love to make more videos uh, about Agile, right? So if that's something you're interested in, make sure if you haven't already, subscribe, like, and drop a comment below so that I know what kind of content uh, is, is important to you and I'll go, go ahead and make that content. But anyways, if you, assuming you do know what I'm talking about here with respect to epics and backlogs and and sprints and stuff um this is going to make a lot more sense right so in a scrum project what you're getting is a backlog right so a backlog is just a large collection of work that eventually needs to get done by your team right um it could be prioritized it couldn't right it, it just it's up to you and your team and how you guys organize and how you adopt and practice your agile methodologies but you have a backlog right so in the kanban by default, you're not going to have a backlog. You're just going to have a very big to do, which is essentially a backlog, but it's not labeled as a backlog. You can definitely add a backlog to, to the Kanban style, but that's a configuration change, which we'll talk about in a future video. But out of the box, that's pretty much the first big difference between the Scrum and the Kanban is Kanban, you're just going to have the board and then you just add stuff to the board and execute that. But Scrum, you're going to have a backlog. You're going to have like a little, like almost like a garage, right? Where you can stash stuff. And then you are going to now have a sprint, right? So a sprint is like a time box. And so in, in this Jira project, right, you're going to actually have like a create sprint button, which is now going to allow you to create them. And, and we're going to be talking about all this in detail once we jump into actually making these projects, right? Right now, I'm just trying to give you an overview of what these different things are. And so all of this is going to be making more sense for my visual learners because we're going to go into it, right? I'm just trying to explain to you what the differences between the two are because a lot of people get caught up here, right? This is like the first like decision that you have to make when you're starting a Jira project is, do I go Kanban? Do I go Scrum? What the heck is both, right? So I'm just trying to alleviate or address those, those questions that you may be having to help you move forward. All right, so you get the sprints and now you can take stuff from your backlog and move them to your, to your Scrum, to your sprint. You can then start the sprint, and when you start that sprint, you now are going to have the view 
of a of an active sprint, which is basically your Kanban, right? They look pretty much the same. Um, and then the last thing you you do get with a Scrum is the reports, right? So Kanban is going to give you a couple of reports, but the Scrum project is going to give you a lot more in depth reports. So if reporting is critical to measuring your team success. Um, you're probably going to want to go with the scrum because the, well, regardless of which way you go, in my opinion, reporting from Atlassian is very lackluster, right? I, I, I honestly think it's very subpar, but you get something and with the scrum, you're going to get a little bit more. So before we finish this video, let's talk about bug tracking and, and, and kind of just discuss why you would even consider this, right? So bug tracking is if you're in an organization and maybe you're just not fully agile, right? Maybe you're not ready to commit to sprints or, or maybe you're not ready to like work on your features and you're just trying to track problems. You have to remember that Jira's roots are in bug tracking, right? That's why issues are called issues in Jira because it was an issue tracker, right? It was, it was just a way for software development teams, teams to track their bugs. So naturally you get a bug tracking template here and Super simple, right? So you'll notice that the issue types are slightly different, right? So you have a bug, but you now have improvements and new features, right? So you get a couple new ones versus stories, right? And the other ones you had a story. Actually, let me make sure that this, so you do have a story with the Kanban. I mean, with the, yeah. So you have stories in both Kanban and Scrum, but in this bug tracking, right? You're not really following the vanilla Agile, right? So now you're, now you're looking at improvements and features. Um, and then you'll notice that your workflow is slightly different, right? Now you have an in review status in here. So those are the differences. Other than that, it's going to look and feel very similar, right? Um, it's, it's regardless of which of the three you go in, Jira is going to be Jira. It's just how and where things are placed that are differing. So we are going to be going into the next step, which is we're going to be talking about the difference between a team and a company managed project, right? So at this point, we still haven't created any project yet. So I'm still walking you through this whole process, but make sure you're subscribed and make sure you like this video because in the next video, we're going to be comparing the difference between differences between team managed and company managed. Also, if you're interested in hiring me, all of my information is in the description of this video. I am a, basically a Jira consultant, an expert level Jira consultant, and if you need any help with getting Jira started in your organization, or maybe you have Jira and you're just not sure if you're using it correctly and you just want some help, all that information is in the description. Um, you are more than welcome to go check it out. I have a website. I do training. I do consulting. I have books. I have blog posts. I have pretty much everything all around the world of Jira. So if you're interested in basically just pursuing any of that, uh, feel free to check out the description. And again, appreciate the like button. Appreciate the subscribe. It lets me know that these videos are interested or, or interesting to you. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.